<laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And maybe it's a controversial subject, uh, but today I'm going to talk about how I don't think you need another dashboard in your life, in your work. Uh, but since we are a bunch of people from uh, almost everywhere in the planet and we have different cultures and uh, different types of humor. So before I start talking, I want to say that this is supposed to be a goofy presentation. Uh, the idea is to make fun about the way we are uh, choosing solutions for the data problems we face, right? So the first thing, the real presentation that I want to say is that I have nothing against dashboards. I even have friends who make them. And I had a phase when I was curious about it and I experimented that a little bit, but maybe we shouldn't be doing dashboards in front of the kids, right? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm I completely in love. I love making dashboards. I think they are amazing. They are important solutions for data problems. And I think they are naturally good, but in the wrong hands, they can be used by evil sometimes. So let's talk about the life cycle of a dashboard to understand where things, uh, things go wrong when using a dashboard. But I'm not talking about the amazing dashboards that we are seeing uh, in this event, uh, dashboards that were created by amazing inform uh, information designers. I'm talking about the dashboards in the wildlife. Uh, the ones you can spot in companies and uh, the ones that are made uh, mostly by data people like myself uh, from the technical side of the force. And um, let's talk about the life cycle of this dashboard. This dashboard, the birth of uh, this wild dashboard happens uh, when someone in the company, probably your boss or someone really uh, high ranked in the company comes to you and say, can you make a dashboard for everyone in the company to access? Can you create something for uh, so everyone can see what's going on in the company? And you feel like there is something strange in this request, but OK, challenge accepted. You create your little baby. So this is your dashboard. You chose the best KPIs of the year. You put a cool donut chart because you heard that you are not supposed to do to use pie charts anymore. So you're taking care and you created a, a, a linear flow of exploration of the panels in the dashboard. So just a few panels with the information that everyone in the company must see. So this is something really nice to put in a screen so everyone in the company can watch the panels maybe while having lunch. This is your baby. It smells nice. It's perfect. And you can see a bright future ahead of it. But what happens with all the babies? they grow they become toddlers god help us i have a toddler in my house a human one not a dashboard toddler uh and then they become kids and then they become teenagers and the sound of a dashboard becoming a teenager in your life is a lot of coworkers coming to you and saying oh it's super nice i really love your dashboard i use it all the time but can you add just one single tiny little panel with a daily view of this KPI because I really need this information. And then you see that your dashboard is not a baby anymore. It has long arms and legs like a clumsy teenager. I was a clumsy teenager, so I know what I'm talking about. Uh, and the information in the dashboard is not the one that is really relevant to everyone in the company. So now it's more of a dashboard that you should explore in the computer than something that is it's going to be nice to watch in a screen while you're having lunch. But is this still your kid? You still love it. You can see a bright future. Uh, you still can see a bright future for it. But then the problem really starts to help to happen when they, the dashboard uh, starts to multiply. And the sound of the dashboard multiplying is a lot of coworkers coming to you and saying, I know I ask this all the time, but how can I find this KPI? Maybe this month it will be easier if you just give me the number and then next month you can send me an email with the instructions and you ask yourself why there is a lot of people asking me how to use the dashboard, why, why they cannot use it anymore. And the reason is because it's a monster now. It's completely 
out of control, uh, you already have two more secondary dashboards because Tableau or Power BI are screaming in pain trying to open the file and to update the data in real time. So it's almost impossible to access and to understand the flow of exploration for this dashboard. And you have at least two reports that you are responsible for updating and a lot of metrics and values you need to send people by the end of the month because they are completely unable to access and to explore the data. And as everything that, that leaves, it is going to die. And the sound of your dashboard dying is a coworker coming to you and saying, where can I find the value for this KPI? And you go, what? Uh, it's in the dashboard. It's like the main KPI of the main panel of the dashboard. And they go, what the fork? There is a dashboard with this information? Uh, how I could not know that I can get, get this information easily, right? And then you know that your dashboard die, but this is not the end of the problem. This is just the beginning of a new cycle because the problem, the need for data, the need for information is only increasing in the company. And you are the reason why, because you are giving people data and they like it. Uh, so, uh, People still need data and you are going to start all over again, another cycle of creating a dashboard to solve the problem. And I know that I sounded like it was uh, a problem, th that the user was the problem, but the user is never the problem. Uh, the problem is that we all are always using dashboards as a solution for any data problem in the company. If we have a data literacy problem uh, that we should be uh, giving training for people, uh, if we have a data communication problem, if we have a data-driven decision problem, any data-related problem, and all the time we go like, let's create a dashboard so everyone can have data, everyone can access data, so everyone can see what's going on. I, I would like to talk about two main problems of this, uh, this idea, this approach of always using dashboards as a solution for any data problem. The first is what I like to call one dashboard to bring them all. And it's this idea that you can create one dashboard that everyone in the company is going to access. And um, I really am a skeptical person, but I truly believe in this case, I truly believe that a unicorn dies every time someone says, I am making a product for everyone to use. And by product, I, uh, it can be a data product, but also any, any product. I am making clothes for everyone to use. I am making a chair for everyone to use. Because a product for all audiences is the same as a product, product that was not meant to anyone in particular. What you are going to create is a duck. It cannot fly properly. It cannot swim properly. It cannot walk properly. It is just bad at everything because it's trying to do everything all at once. And when we talk specifically about data problems, uh, we can have different approaches, different solutions for the same data problem. We can solve a data problem using a database, or we can work a little bit on the database and create an index and then answer this problem using indexes. Or we can visualize the data in these indexes and uh, answer the problem with a data visualization or an algorithm or a simulator. And you can see that they form a ladder because they depend on each other. And because the higher the complexity uh, of the product, the solution you are creating, uh, the higher the knowledge to design this analytical solution. On the other hand, the user needs less data literacy to navigate the solution. It's way easier for a user to extract uh, answers, to extract information from a simulator that is already doing all the data work for the user than from a database. To use a database, a user needs maybe a little, bit, a little bit of knowledge on coding, uh, a lot of knowledge on statistics, on the database and how the data was collected, about the business rules and et cetera. So uh, a dashboard is not an analytical solution. A dashboard is a data product that shows some of the analytical solutions. And what a dashboard shows is mainly data visualization and a lot of indexes. Uh, sometimes a little bit of algorithm, you can have predictions and some calculations and databases, uh, the tables, uh, a 
where to download the information and sometimes maybe a little bit of a simulator. So this creates a pattern of complexity that the dashboard shows and it has a correspondence with the data literacy uh, required for the user to navigate a dashboard. If you have a user with the data literacy behavior of the yellow curve, this user is going to be frustrated by not accessing raw data and doing whatever they want using Excel, right? And that's not their fault. They know a lot about data. They know a lot about the business rules. They just want to uh, answer their problems in their way. On the other side of the scale, if you have a user with the pink curve data literacy behavior, this user is going to find it hard to navigate and understand the information and will need support. And again, it's not their fault. They were hired by the company because they have knowledge in a lot of stuff, but they don't have this exact knowledge required for the complexity of the dashboard. So if you are creating a dashboard uh, and you want this dashboard to be a solution for everyone in the company, you might be being, uh, you might be a data-driven, this might be a data-driven approach, but definitely is not a user-driven approach. You cannot say you are creating a data product that is user-driven. And even further, you are you designing your product considering a perspective that is community-centered, a perspective that consider how this user is going to communicate the results from the dashboard with other people in the company. So are you planning, are you creating a dashboard that helps people, even if you have like the perfect user for your dashboard, you have a user with the data literacy that perfectly matches the distribution of complexity of the dashboard, but are you helping this user to uh, communicate the results from the dashboard in a 10 minutes meeting with the board of the company so they can uh, make decisions about the future of the company or to create a, a data training for people with way less data literacy than they have. Uh, and I know this is a super complex topic and we can go deeper and deeper and deeper. So I'm going to move on because we don't have the time. And I will talk about the second problem of always choosing dashboards as a solution for data problems. And is this idea that you can give people freedom to explore the data. So I'm going to create a dashboard so everyone can access the data and they can do whatever they want with the data. And the problem is that uh, this idea that the only way people can interact with data is by exploring freely the data. When we talk about data solutions, when we talk about communicating with data, we need to understand uh, what we are trying to communicate, why we are trying to communicate something, and why people are engaging with the product we are offering them. So you can use data to inspire people to feel something, to inspire people to feel emotional about, about a subject, to feel angry about something, to be entertained. You can use data to explain a situation for people so they can understand what's going on. You can use data to inform people so they can make better decisions. Or you can, in fact, provide data for them to explore and draw their own conclusions. When we talk about dashboards, we are going to focus on the inform to the side and provide to explore. So the inform to the side is when you have results and you want to present these results for the audience so they can make better decisions. A lot of dashboard users are looking for help in making better decisions. But uh, a majority, the majority of the dashboard developers, especially from the technical side of the force, they are willing to provide data for people to explore. So uh, they have a set of data and they want to make it available for interest people to explore and draw their own conclusions. And this, this comes from a good place in the heart. Like, I don't want to make assumptions for you. I think you are a smart person and you can know more about the business rules and the business problems. So maybe you should do it by yourself. But if you want to create a successful dashboard, you need to match what the users want, uh, what the user wants with the dashboard and uh, why you are making this dashboard. And since you cannot change the user, you cannot change the problems that this user faces, what you can change is why you are making a dashboard. You can make a more exploratory dashboard or you can make something that will 
help people to make better decisions. And once this is set, then you need to consider the data literacy of the user. Even if they want to explore the data, to be free to explore the data, there are a lot of levels of exploratory data they can do, right? And then even if all this is, is ready and is matching, uh, you need to add the journey. You need to create a journey, a user journey. So this is going to be a successful dashboard. And by journey, I mean, you need to plan the dashboard in a way that guides the users, that tells a story for the users, not just by giving them freedom to explore. Go, go be free, go fly, okay? Uh, you can use visual elements, you can use colors in dashboards especially, you can use hierarchy and the organization of the panels, the charts, to, you can add text to, uh, to explain what's going on for people. So even if they want to explore the data, you are going to help them explore without feeling lost in, in the things. You can explore a city using a map, you don't need to be completely lost in the city to be free to explore right but because i knew i was going to be really excited talking about how to make better dashboards because i i do i really love making dashboards i put this note to myself i don't want to make uh, to remind me that i don't want you to make better dashboards at least not today we can talk about this at any time today i want you to stop making dashboards so let's stop talking about the problem and let's talk about solutions if not a dashboard then what uh, what about the report? If the information won't be updated uh, and if it needs a little bit of storytelling to explain insights, to explain the method, to explain the problem to people, then you can create a nice and a beautiful report and send them by email. Almost the same situation, you can use a slides presentation. Uh, but in this case, if, if the information updates monthly or less frequently, you can uh, make the charts in the slides, they, you can connect them with the real data and you just need to check, check if the information uh, is updating okay. Um, and especially if it is going to be a presentation anyway, because as I said, remember, uh, are you considering the community perspective? So if it is going to be a presentation anyway, if they are going to use the data to create a presentation, you don't need to create a dashboard in the middle of the workflow. You just go ahead and make a slides presentation. What about a database? For those people that are always asking for more details, for more information, maybe they don't have the privilege access that you have for the, with the data, or maybe they don't know how to code so they can access and, and query the information, but they know a lot about, about using data and tools to use the data. So you can just create a nice and beautiful and clean database for them to use and to explore the way they want. What about a chatbot? Uh, if you are really talking about fee, few key informations that everyone in the company should see, should know, should know about what's going on, uh, you can make it fun. You can make it uh, fun for people to, to access in an easy way in, in, and immediately. I saw this being made using Slack and even people that were not really into data, they were super curious to ask the chatbot about what the sales, total sales of the month, right? Uh, this gets people curious. What about the microsite? This is my personal favorite. It's almost like a presentation, a slides presentation, but you can make it prettier. Uh, if it's important for the user to interact with the data, to apply filters, to hover the charts, to, to see more information, to make selections, you can put uh, flourish uh, visualizations into the, this microsite and it's going to be really beautiful. Uh, you can update the data and people won't keep an outdated version as it would happen with the report sent by email. And it's easy to access using a mobile phone. So if you are in the middle of the meeting and you are discussing about something, you can grab your phone and go like, shut up, I am right, I have the data uh, with me. Uh, and Finally, don't forget to always ask yourself, could this dashboard be an email? A lot of times it could. Uh, thank you so much. I am Anna. I am here representing Odd Studio. We are uh, a studio that transforms data into unique solutions through design. And we do this by visualizing, building, and teaching from databases to AI systems into microsites, reports, train, trainings, dashboards, why not? 
uh, and everything we can imagine, and we can imagine a lot of stuff. Uh, you might know us as the designers and developers of the VizHead, uh, which is a data experience for using the data from the Data V Society survey. And in the next few days, we are launching the version 2.0 with the data from the last year um, survey. So please check it out. Uh, but what inspired us to create this presentation was our work in strategic analysis of data solutions in companies with a project, uh, with a method that we call analytical photography, which is a bird's eye view of companies' data solutions. And we found out that companies have a lot of dashboards, by, but really a lot of dashboards, but many of them are not really answering business questions. They are just uh, making it hard for people to find the data they need to answer their, their problems. And if you are interested to know more about this project, and if you are attending in person at the event, you can uh, look for Leticia, Bruno, and Francisco. They are attending in person in Porto, and they will be really happy to talk to you about uh, this project and all the other projects. But if you are not attending in person, you can reach us uh, by any one of these channels. Thank you so much. Muito obrigada. A question that I had is just, what are your, do you have any tips, um, since it is so user driven, right? So, so the focus is we should care about what they, their needs are. How do you sort of address that? Do you, do you have tips for how you could approach understanding what those needs are without opening a whole can of worms? Because I know in my case, if I'm like, do you want this? Do you want that? They'll just say yes to everything. It all sounds good. Um, but then what they use is like, to, you know, five or two percent of that or, or something. So any any tips in that space that you could share would be super helpful, I think, to our audience. Yeah, uh, I think if you are creating something, if you are inside a company creating something, this can start as a conversation at, co at coffee, you know, like trying to understand what people need to, trying to see they complaining about the problems, like uh, not in front of the boss, not in a meeting, but when they can complain about it, and then you're going to understand the problem. Uh, and um, try to understand outside your mind. If you are a technical person like myself, it is really hard to understand uh, why people cannot see something that is really obvious to you. So uh, try to make people feel comfortable explaining that maybe this chart is not enough for them. And sometimes it's just changing a chart, changing something, the way something is written in the dashboard or the order of the things or adding uh, another visualization that is going to explain them. In, in my experience, it was something like I, I created a lot of dashboards for people uh, from... Um, from uh, they are creating products that are not really data related at all. And uh, for me, it was really uh, the easiest thing to understand a rate of something. So this is the rate of, uh, and for them, it was super hard to understand that when something was going up, the uh, metric is going down and stuff like that, right? So uh, understand what they are uh, asking, what they need, what are the problems in, to understand the data, it's uh, a nice uh, way to start a conversation. Great, thank you. Uh, we have one question. Any resources for connecting live data to PowerPoint or Keynote um, directly? Because that would be a great template to have for analysts who really do slot into a dash in a dashboard just to screenshot it for their deck. Mm, it depends, I guess it depends a lot. Uh, especially if you want, we, we tend to make things going um, automatically, but sometimes it can be a problem because it's going to make everything heavier and uh, more complex. So sometimes uh, it pays off if you just um, assume, to, if you uh, are going to make one step and then just maybe you can make automatic, automatically a lot of steps and then create a table that you are going to upload using a Google Sheets, for example, and this Google Sheets is going to be connected with the slides presentation. So uh, this is going to be, you, you just create one step when you have to go it by hand, you know, but uh, all the rest, because otherwise can be super complicated and you can have security 
problems to connect all the data with the database with all the information and this is not a thing you would especially if a lot of people can uh, change can uh, can uh, can, can uh, edit the information. If the, you have a lot of editors in the slides presentation, this is going to be a problem. Absolutely. Um, another question. So how do you track standardized uses, usage metrics for all those different platforms? If something is in a report, a PowerPoint, a Microsoft, et cetera, um, just to decide if something is useful, or used often or not? I'm not sure if I understood the question. So I think if you're if you're you know if it's not a report or if it's not a dashboard, how do you track usage? If it's if you're looking at a number of different avenues, um, you know how, you can't really tell how many people open viewed a PowerPoint yeah. right or a PDF. So um, do you track those things or do you have any uh, suggestions on how to? Let me see. Um, it depends. With a Microsoft Microsite, it would be easier. You can you can just set how to do this. Uh, with emails, if you are sending a report by email, I guess maybe you can uh, track uh, who opened the email and if they are clicking the email. So it's a way to, to, uh, to you can always uh, create a survey and ask for people if they are using. But I think the small or medium companies, you are going to see if people are using the data, right? Uh, uh, you are going to feel if they are not using, especially because they are going to ask you about the data. <laughs> they are going to say, I send you this report. Please <laughs> read what I, said, uh, I have sent you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and somebody rec recommended using like a bitly short URL. That will allow for yeah, some tracking. I yeah, do that sometimes, nice so idea. totally. Yeah, yeah great idea. Um, yeah, so uh, for me, I guess my other uh, things that really resonated with me was the idea of dashboard creep. And I know I get pulled into that. There's just one more view, one more thing. Um, but in some ways, you know, I I never thought to cut it off either. <laughs> I never thought to say this isn't working. I just kept building it on. So do you feel yeah. like, do you see that with designers too, where we're so ingrained, like we, we're attached to our dashboards and we need to just keep building and building and building and never stop. And um, as much as it is the users too, who kind of, think that that's what they need as well like is it is it kind of on both sides is that what you're finding yeah i, I think maybe what we all need to understand uh, is that all dashboards is going to die <laughs> and and that's that's not the problem the problem is that we need them to live a a, a happy life so uh, it is okay for them to die if it, it is okay if you feel like uh it's enough for this dashboard and you need to create another one because it's time but uh, this idea of keeping um, fixing, always fixing, and all of us designers or uh, data data scientists, we are always trying to fix. And this maybe is not the best approach, the best uh, way to use the time, to use the resources with dashboards. Absolutely, just let it die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Please do go to the chat and see all the love that you're getting. Um, I really appreciate you, you being here. So it was a lovely talk. Um, good luck with biz heads. I'll, I'll be the first one. Thank on you so much. Side, so. All right.